All right, we are live and we are trying it with one camera this week, so hopefully we don't have the same issues we had last week. So uh, thanks if you were here last week. I uh, tried the two cameras set up, and for some reason, uh, if the second camera gets uh, removed, it completely messes up the audio. But uh, yeah, so what are we talking about today? Today, we are talking about using magnets to use uh, to change your scales on your tongue drum. So we'll talk about what a mode is, that sort of stuff, and this is going to be a multi-part uh, thing. Uh, it came to my attention. Uh, thank you, Ken, from the uh, Steel Tongue Group, our Learning Steel Tongue uh, Stung, Learning Steel Tongue Drum Group. Man, tough, tougher to say than I realized. Um, and this makes sense because not all metal is uh, magnetic. But uh, yes, uh, that should be a question that you should look into if you are interested. Is not all materials are going to be magnetic. If this were made of copper, magnets will not stick to it. Um, so you will not be able to change your tongue drum if you are, um, you know, if you have a drum that's not magnetic. Um, so yeah, we're going to be talking about modes today. So the first question is, well, what is a mode? Uh, if you have a music background, you may have heard this, but if you haven't, then just kind of stick along for the ride. So typically, uh, with a lot of Western music, it's based on something known as a major scale. So that would be this. And you can have uh, music based on minor scales and other scales. But if we're thinking about a major scale or Ionian mode, same thing, right? You would have uh, for numbers would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one. Or if we're using solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. And on this particular drum, it's going to be basically D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp. And then D. Which is which is great. And of course, you can also, if you wanted to move everything down, and you could basically say, well, six, for instance, we're talking tongue drum speak. Six is gonna be my home note, right? So all of a sudden I would get this, 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 this. Or I can say basically based on la. So be la ti do re mi. Right? Which obviously sounds certainly a little bit bit sadder if you're playing something like the uh sound of silence or a song like that that would be what you would do of course the problem with the tongue drum or i guess not the problem because the limitations are actually what make it fun is typically you're going to have your your one and then you're going to have a note below that right so five one which would be if we're talking solfege so do which is extremely common uh <laughs> Some, I mean, obviously some songs aren't going to go down to the low five to one, but many songs will. And unfortunately, if you're stuck here with your six as your lowest note, well, you've run out of notes. You can no longer do that. And of course, you could theoretically move things up. But um, so that's one of the advantages to, to using the magnets. Um, so the first question is, what is a mode? Because that's the fancy word that I'm using. So if we think about this, right, we have a, uh, well, do tongue drum speak, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Right, high one. That would be a major scale. So one is the home. That's where it's trying to go back to, right? Trying to go back to one. Yeah, if you do this. Right, you want to hear that last note, right? You want to, it, want, it wants to return back to its home. It's the, the place of rest. And one of the best ways to think about music is it's all about you have tension and release. So when we're going down, you have this tension and release. And everything is based on that home note, right? So if all of a sudden I'm going to call this one, that's the home note. You know, our chords follow this. So all the, what a mode is, is we're basically saying, well, instead of, and again, lots of different ways to think about this. Instead of one, you know, being our home base, we can think about it as our two as our home base. So all of a sudden we're thinking about uh, playing this. Two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two, one, two. And if all of a sudden this is where it wants to go back. Um, I always use Shady Grove as a good example. Shady Grove, my little love. Shady Grove, I know. Shady Grove, my little love. I'm bound for the Shady Grove. 
and you can clearly hear that that too is where it's at rest, right? If I went, Shady Grove, my little love, Shady Grove, I know, Shady Grove. Clearly doesn't sound resolved, right? So it's the idea of rest. So if all of a sudden in a mode, we're going to say two is our resting point. One, two, or two, three, four, five, six, six, five, four, three, two. You can also refer to that as uh, re, mi, fa, and things like that. This is where it gets a little bit more complicated. And you can certainly, I, I've had uh, the nerdiest debates ever um, about <laughs> where dough should be. And when you use mixed dough and, 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 and movable dough, that's, a, that's another conversation. So let's say we have two. Two is our, our home base, right? Uh, which will then, oh, the seven would get this sound. Which would be something known as the Dorian mode. So let's say we have three. Let's see, just, I'm going to do that just to cleanse our tonal palette. So let's say three is now our, our uh, note of rest. Da, 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 da. Yeah, my, my attempt at Metallica. Da, 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 da. Wherever I may roam. Sounds better. Sounds better on guitar. Well, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. Um, or you could have four as your point of rest, right? So all of a sudden now we'll have... But the idea of a mode is that you have these different points of rest. Now, are all the notes uh, exactly, uh, are, are they the same? Are they shared? Absolutely, right? Because if I'm going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, or one, those are the same exact notes. I played the same exact notes right there. Um, Right? Perfect, right? So if I do this, and I just start playing off of the two, they're the same exact notes. They all share the same exact thing. So if you know you, uh, if you're looking, thinking about the actual notes, if you have a, a tongue drum in C, you'd have C D E F G A B C, and if you have one in D, it would be uh, D E F sharp G A B C sharp D. I don't think I skipped one, but you know. <laughs> but um, so you have the same one. So the idea is, when you change the mode, it's a shared place shared notes with a major scale. So these would be the modes of a major scale, except you're saying, I'm going to be playing off the two. So now here's where it's going to get confusing because obviously we said before, we want this low so and then high do, right? Bum bum, because of that is really popular. Bum bum, that 5-1 resolution used all the time. So what you could do is even though these are related, you could start thinking about this one as being its own mode. So the first mode in a major scale is going to be, right, a, in fact, fancy graphic time. Here we go. Add it to stream. Excellent. So if, hopefully you're able to see that. Oh, and we're going to say, ah, no, Frando can hang out there in the corner. I think we'll think we'll be okay. We're going to have this, right? We're going to still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. And you can see on the chart, again, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. 80% of songs are going to be using this, right? But now let's change it a little bit. And let's move our slide. Excellent. So now we have something called the natural minor. And you'll see we have the magnets placed. Now, again, the magnets in terms of where you're going to have to place it will depend on your drum. Mine, for the most part, like to be pretty close to the edge to move it down a uh, an entire step. And again, we I had that video on using the magnets to, to tune it and stuff like that. And actually here the seven is not quite tuned because I put it on the inside, but anyway. So let's uh, let's start doing some magnet changes. So actually here, I'll get, oh, get it in the shot. It's like I'm in an infomercial. <laughs> All right. So we can see the one stays the same. The two stays the same. The three is gonna need to be lowered and to lower it, we're going to put a magnet. In case you can't see that, that's in. Wonderful, 720, because I am not paying StreamYard that much money to go in 1080. Um, so the three is lowered. The uh, the four is the same. The five is the same. Every single time you see a six, it's going to be lowered. Every time you see a seven, it's going to be lowered. The seven is always a little tough for me to kind of dial in. So, And that would also mean that the low six would be in there. So I've now changed this to where the every six is now has a magnet on it in a spot, which is approximately now, obviously you would use a tuner, but we're not going to use a tuner for this. Um, 
every single uh, six is lowered, every single three is lowered, and every single seven is lowered. So this is um, the most popular or the second most popular mode, which is also just known as a minor scale. And again, this is going to be slightly out of tune because, again, I'm, I'm just kind of doing these approximate. I'm not going to take the time to uh, place the magnets quite yet, but you know, you'll, you'll, you'll get the main idea. Right? So also we would have one, two, flat three with the magnet, four, five as it normally would be, six, six, ooh, it's out of tune. That's okay. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to power through it. Uh, seven, pretty close. Sorry. I'm using my, <laughs> using my ear as a tuner, which is not as good as the electronic tuners. So again, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and one. And of course, you want to do a bunch of microtonal stuff. This is a perfect instrument to get into any sort of microtonality thing. If you have any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Uh, I did not stream to Facebook uh, this time, uh, really, because it seems like Facebook just does not like these StreamYard streams. So also now we would have this sort of idea of the minor tonality. Uh, and the other thing is, if you're talking solfege, everything is usually going to end up going down. So if you're looking at the chart right there on the screen, your me would become may and your la's would become lays and your t's would become tays. And this way it just notes that you're not singing the same exact pitch. You're actually singing it a little bit down. And again, if I'm saying flat, uh, like a flat seven, Basically, you're just putting a magnet onto it. So just one more time. So if we were going. Uh, mm. All right, so I'm just picking out some things by ear. So Sound of Silence works a lot better if you end up doing this. Again, not going to be perfectly in tune uh, with without a tuner, but that's okay. So let's go to the next mode. This is probably going to be one of the more common ones. Basically, what I've done is... Um, Every mode that you're going to see tonight, again, all modes of the major scale are going to be probably the most used to the least used or the least common. And then uh, I'll, I'll show you just another trick. So we have something referred to as the uh, the Dorian scale, which is a minor scale. So we're going to have a flat three. Make sure that that's off the one. Also, be careful if you're using a magnet on the tongue drum, even having the magnet a little bit this direction. Um, it will make it flat, so that's uh, you got to make sure they're, they're fairly down. And again, this is just the official tongue drum warning or magnet tongue drum warning. Uh, these are extremely dangerous if they get in the hands of children because children put things in their mouth. So these I make sure I have uh, kept away from my son, and I don't have them readily available when he's uh, you know playing around the tongue drum. So you gotta gotta always be careful. So we'd have one, uh, two. We'd have a flat three. We have a uh, four or five. We'd have all our sixes would be flat. So, right, all our laws or lays. And um, the, the main difference is going to be, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, our sixes are natural and our sevens are going to be flat, right? Because it's, it's the raised sixth in Dorian. Sometimes you get ahead of yourself. So, that's going to kind of give you this uh, often used in jazz, kind of an open sound. Songs used uh, in the Renaissance will often do this, or they'll move it between the minor scale, which we just did, or the Dorian. And you're going to hear this just this different sort of um, like a bluesy version of the minor. Lots of different ways to think about it. But so if we have this, we have two, three, four, five, six. Right? Let's see if I can tune this. Ah, there we go. All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. So if you want to do your walking bass lines like Miles Davis. That's right. I just scat sang a version of So What by Miles Davis. But uh, yeah, there's lots of lots of different uses for the Dorian. And it's just, there's something about it. Something that just super pleasing. It's a great scale to improvise off of. Uh, also, I'm going to point out a lot of times I'm hitting this because uh, in the single camera effect, I'm trying to get 
I'm holding this up a little bit higher. I have the best technique. That's okay. So yeah, that's that would be Dorian. So again, it's like a minor scale, which we just did, except it has this. You could also use this to try to get a four major chord, which is also good. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, we have the Phrygian. Uh, as a guitar player, this may be my most favorite uh, scale. So let's talk about it. Yeah, I probably should have kept that. Should have kept that seven when I had it in tune. Foolish me resetting. Um, okay, so what, what's the, what's this one? So our one's going to be the same. Our two is going to be flat. So that's really the that's the sound of Phrygian there. It's that flat two. It's a very dark sound. Probably my most favorite uh, mode. Uh, the four is going to be natural. Five is going to be natural. Six is going to have a magnet as well. All, right, all our sixes are going to have magnets and our sevens are going to have magnets. So that's going to get you sort of this sound. We're, so we're going to have one, flat two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, and then one. Interestingly enough, a lot of 90s hip hop will use the Phrygian scale. Uh, I'm not a huge 90s hip hop fan, but you know, you start researching the stuff and it, you can hear this sort of sound of, right? Um, here we have one at rest, and then we have sort of that movement to the flat two. Da, 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 da. Uh, also, a lot of heavy metal music, again, uh, Metallica. One, one more shot at that. There it is. Three, four. And again, the advantage on this, instead of playing it on, on that, is going to be that you just have this ability to go so down, right? Being able to get to that 5-1 just gives you a lot more options. and basically just end up not running out of range. Um the Phrygian mode, super, 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 super popular um, with uh, Spanish music, uh, music, uh, the Andalusian cadence, that sort of stuff. So this thing going down to that, going down to flat six, going down to five. Mm. Ah. <laughs> now, let me try that one more time. So the now, the problem, and I see we have some people. Also, thank you to, uh, I've got a bunch of new subscribers uh, it seems that actually putting out videos uh, seems to be working. So uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. If you're out there, you can certainly let me know. Thumbs up. Um, one of the problems, and I'm, I'm pretty good with knowing where everything is in the tongue drum. Uh, when you have the magnets on the outside, like obviously if I was recording this, probably what I would do is I would use the magnets inside to change. Because um, this way you're, you're avoiding them. The uh, the one problem that you do run into is right where the magnets are, the, it's covering the numbers. So I'm trying to make that switch pretty quickly. <laughs> I'm just like, I think this is where seven is, and, and it's it's sort of wrong, right? So anyway, that end of Lucian Cadence. So you'd have one going down to seven, going down to six, going down to five. All right, let's keep moving on. But yeah, Phrygian, uh, just an awesome, awesome mode just to, to create him. All right, we got our Mixolydian, which sounds super fancy, but actually it's really not all that fancy. Um, it's basically uh, a major scale, so um, with a flat seven. So if we're seeing, I don't think that's covering that. Let's see. Oh, whoops! Skip the Locrian. Oh, no, nor that. It's all sorts of madness uh, on the next page. So Mixolydian, right? Major scale will be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then back to one or eight. And what we're going to do is it actually kind of makes it less. Uh, it's the best way to put it. It makes it uh, the the resolve on it is uh, not nearly as um, 
as aggressive as you as you would because you end up having this sort of flat seven sound so also we're gonna have one two three four five six flat seven and then one flat seven six five four three two one or if we're talking solfege again be do re me fa so la that's sorry the, sorry was in minor for a second do re me fa so la te do So if you're, uh, a lot of rock music uses this. So if you have, um, Guns N' Roses song, I, I, I told, played it. Uh, Sweet Child of Mine uh, ends up sort of doing things. And, uh, There it is. I figured it out, and I'm figuring it out from here. So all of a sudden, there, right, right, we have sort of this one and three as far as the chord, and you could play the the line as well. But without this flat seven, you're not going to be able to end up playing that, right? So we basically have, if we're just talking roots, right? It's going one, then it goes down to this flat seven I put there. Then it's going to the four, cause that's the chord that it needs to go there. And you're not gonna be able to get that sound without that. Uh, like Sweet Home Alabama does this, you know, Mixolydian thing. Again, a lot of a lot of jazz uh, solos will end up using sort of Mixolydian grips and things like. That. Again, but what's nice about it, it's not nearly as final of a resolution, right? So if I'm going, this is uh, so I just moved my magnet from seven but i made it just where it's off so it's going to be a natural seven one two three four five six seven t and you can kind of hear that wants to go up to there but you know you move it there and all of a sudden now you got a nice it's like the diet pepsi version of, of major it doesn't quite have as, uh, as much bite all right so now we're about to go into crazy town uh, let's take it to crazy town uh, thank you for everyone everyone watching. And uh, like I said, I'm doing this every Thursday, having some sort of music topic, but I'm really into this tongue drum now. I feel every week I learn something totally new and totally cool on this. And uh, if you need any any help, I've got a couple of guides. I need to get like an actual buying guide, but yeah, just uh, hit me up. Or, uh, you know, learning tongue drum uh, on uh, Facebook. That's a good group, a lot of good people in there. All right, so low Korean. Uh, as you can see, it basically looks like we took uh, a bunch of magnets and threw it at the screen, and we're basically in Magnet City. So what's happening here is the one's going to be the same. Once we get to Lydian, that's a whole other ball of wax, but we'll talk about that. So the two is going to be flat. The three is going to be flat. The four is going to be natural. The five is going to be flat, giving it that official low Korean sound that everyone loves. The six is going to be flat. The seven is going to be flat, and the one is going to be, of course, the high one is going to be natural. So basically everything except for the four is going to be flat. So you end up getting sort of this sound. So it's almost like the Phrygian, except you have this thing going on. All right, that tritone, good old tritone interval. So if you want to play some Master of Puppets, uh, there you go. YYZ by Rush, except that is totally not the rhythm, but that's okay. So again, we would have one, flat two, flat three, four, flat five, flat six, flat seven, one. Da -da 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 oh. And how quickly I forget. Um, yeah, also, you would have to change that low, low five as well. So just a heads up, because the, the uh, at least on this design, that low fives got significantly um, more mass to it. So what we're doing is we're adding mass. So to basically to lower that note down, you're going to have to add. I add two magnets. Uh, your mileage may vary. So all of a sudden. Of course, if you wanted to, because we don't necessarily have to play by the rules, if you wanted to have a natural five on the bottom and then a sharp five, uh, there's nothing that says you can't do that because guess what? You are the boss. Mm -hmm. 
that's the other thing I've been attempting to do. So Locrian, I think it's a Bjork song. I think David Ben Piano did it. I've never heard this Bjork song. Uh, there's not a lot of stuff that, that's used in Locrian outside of the metal community, from what I can tell. Phrygian is uh, definitely more used in the hip-hop community. Um, so, all right, we're going to go to one more for tonight. Uh, if you have any questions, you know, uh, feel free to ask, uh, whether it's about the tongue drum or about the magnets or, you know, about the cool blue lights that you have to do when you do YouTube. Um, certainly pop it in there. So there's a disclaimer here. So there's a heavy music theory warning. Uh, I don't blame anyone for clicking off or just completely, uh, just, uh, zoning out or getting yourself a, uh, a cold beverage uh, over the next couple of minutes. So this is where we have to be careful. So a Lydian, right, the Lydian scale, popular in the Simpsons theme and the Jetsons theme and a uh, uh, number of movie soundtracks and mostly mostly used with um, in movies and stuff like that. You get you get a little little bit of it using pop music, but um, best examples are movies. So Lydian, all right. This is where we're gonna get where we're gonna get a little crazy and it's gonna get a little confusing. And where normally this is a great instrument to teach music theory, trying to explain Lydian yet play it on the tongue drum is not a good example. So let's let's explain this. All right, start stay with me. Are you staying with me? All right, stay with me. It's about to get real bumpy real quick. So the Lydian is not nearly that that complicated of a uh, of a scale. It's basically a major scale with a sharp four. All right. So uh, the way you would play that would be one, two, three. This four would be raised five, six, seven, one. Everything's good. The four is sharp. Right. Makes complete sense. It's a major scale with a sharp four. However, with the magnets on a tongue drum, and this is where it really it, 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 it's a, like an extra step and it gets super confusing. Don't get me wrong. Awesome scale to use with the magnets with a tongue drum. You cannot raise the pitch. Uh, you can roll. So I, I'm always a fan of this. Hopefully this, this comes out. So like. So you could get a roll effect. But you can't lower it with the, with the magnets. Um, I'm sorry. You can't raise it with the magnets. So the only way to get a sharp four with Lydian on a tongue drum is to lower everything else so everything else has to come down the four stays the same and because you've lowered everything down all of a sudden now the four is raised so in fact you know let me just explain this one more time without the you know, let's, let's remove that from the stream all right because this is confusing one more time all right lydian is like a major scale with a sharp four you can't make any of the notes sharper because the magnets will only bring it down. So the only way to get this Lydian scale, I told you music theory warning, is to lower everything else down and leave the four. So we have the four. We're not changing the four. We're moving everything down. And then that, that all of a sudden becomes a sharp four in relation to everything else. All right, let's get this back, back up on the stream. Um, so that means if your, your tongue drum is normally in D, all of a sudden now your tongue drum is completely in C sharp. If your tongue drum is in C, it would be in C flat or B, same thing going on. So, all right, let's, uh, let's try to get this going. So we're going to need a, we're going to need a magnet. I'm not even going to call it a flat one because someone's going to call me out on it. We're going to put a magnet to lower the pitch on one because we need a sharp four. The two is going to have to be lowered because we need a sharp four. The three is going to be lowered because we need a sharp four. The four is going to stay the same because that's going to be the only thing staying up. The five is going to be lowered because we need a sharp four. This six is going to be lowered because we need a sharp four. The seven is going to be lowered because we need a sharp four. So basically, we're lowering every single note except for the four to make it sharp. And again, I'm trying to... I am not a fan of misinformation or bad information. Um, and there's plenty of it out there on the internet. And I know there's been plenty of times where I'll see something and you just want to say, no, please don't listen to this video because it's wrong because it may be ambiguous or confusing. So um, that's why I'm, I'm being super careful with the way I'm wording everything on this. So last time, I know this is way, way too long of an explanation for this. I just don't want there to be any confusion. You're lowering everything except for the four down. So the four 
can be sharp. So the four is sharp because everything else is low, lowered down. So it makes it, it makes it fairly confusing. So how does it sound, right? So we would have one, and I'm going to refer to these as the correct things. So even though it has a magnet, I'm not referring to it as a flat, right? So it has, it's a one, it's a two, it's a three, it's a sharp four, it's a five. Let's try to tune that a little bit. All right. Six, seven. Oh, that's going to be, that's, that one's going to be a dicey one. There we go. So we have one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven, one. And again, you would fine tune all of these, especially if you're doing any sort of recordings. So, you know, if all of a sudden you're saying, hey, I really want to do the, uh, the Jetsons theme song, right? Definitely on song drum, this is the most wild or unwieldy because everything's got a magnet on it. So this, again, you would have to get, you know, your tuner out and things like that. So all of a sudden you'd have, um, and now if we're speaking solfege. Do, mi, fi, so, da, 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 da. Um, Simpsons theme song. Uh, let's see. Warning, make sure that your five has also got the magnets on it. That, that's also going to be a thing. I remember, two magnets for five, so we have. And that's so, also now you, you have this ability to do the, uh, you're able to play things in Lydian. Um, and it works out, again, really well. It's a little unwieldy. So now we've got, uh, I keep forgetting. Right, that's the beginning of the Back to the Future sort of main theme. Da, da, da. Yeah, there is one more time. Sorry, picking all, all these by ear. I should probably have written them down, but oh well. Oh, finally. Oh, Larry, I appreciate you hopping on. So Larry says, uh, surprising how much uh, the five was ringing with uh, even with the magnets on it. Yeah, it's uh, and of course you end up getting the the overtones. It, it's I, Larry, I know you have a tongue drum, and I, I know you know there is no problem with having everything ringing out. In fact, uh, you know, obviously, I, I stuff this one with the uh, with paper towels to get it to to ring less. But yeah, it definitely rings out, and even even without the magnets, and where theoretically it's you're not going to get the sympathetic vibrations, it'll it'll yeah, it's going to totally it's going to totally ring out. So yeah, Larry, thank you for the comment. So again, so uh, one more time, so we got. Da, 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 da. All right, so one more time. And that's going to get you a So uh, let's just kind of wrap it up. If anyone has any questions, yeah, I'm, I'm certainly more than willing to just, you know, talk in tongue drum. See, that's the perfect name for the, uh, the evening. So let's see. Let me pop this off. Uh, here's just another uh, visual uh, presentation of it. We got the banners. We got this. Okay. So just a uh, a quick review, right? So if you're playing in major, most popular scale in in all of Western music, uh, and I say Western music because it's not going to be the most popular, uh, you know, scale in in certain cultures, but certainly uh, most uh, most pop music on the radio and things like that, you're going to end up hearing. Major, just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then do, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do, ti, la, sa, po, and plus, fa, mi, re, do. And again, be able to get the, the low, so. Moving to, uh, let's see. Second most popular, definitely going to be minor. Again, so that's going to be flat three, flat six, and flat seven. And again, can you do some hybrid stuff? Absolutely. Uh, next week, I'm going to talk about using two magnets to bring some things down. You can actually play a blues scale on this, which is interesting because there's actually a chromatic note. So basically you have four, sharp four, five, or flat five, however you want to think about it. Um, 
seven is always much better. What's nice is the more you kind of mess around with, the more you get know exactly where the sweet spot for each note is. All right, so minor scale. And again, the reason why you're doing this instead of just playing off the six, because you really want that, that low so. So minor, there you go, if that, if that visualization helps you. We got the Dorian again, so you can just take this and you're going to take it off of the six because Dorian is uh, with a raised six. And all of a sudden you get this. Uh... Perfectly in tune. Ah! Hurts my teeth. Right. Again, very sort of jazzy. Mixolydian. By the way, there's probably a typo. If anyone sees a typo, I, I, I did these pretty quick the other week. So uh, Mixolydian, basically, it's that I, whole idea of it's a major scale with a, a little less bite because of the flat seven. Again, uh, Sweet Child. I can only think of the Step Brothers thing where they sing Sweet Child of Mine. <laughs> nice solo, buddy. <laughs> oh, man. All right, let's see. Uh, the Phrygian, my favorite. Near and dear to my heart. And all the guitar music I love. Using so much of the Phrygian. Uh, again, uh, minor scale with the flat two, if you want to think about it like that. Um, and a Lucian cadence, all that good stuff. Every every metal and 90s, uh, you know, dark sounding uh, hip hop song. And that's the thing. These all sort of have feelings to them. They have vibes, right? So again, Phrygian, very, da, 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 very dark on sort of the vibe. Oh, I may need to make sure I have that. Incredible how versatile one of these instruments are. I bought it just being like, yeah, let me check one of these things out. They seem fun. This was uh, like a real cheap one off of Amazon for like, I got it for 50 bucks. Um, and again, I think I've mentioned this. The, the company that makes this tongue drum also makes um, personal saunas and uh, farm uh, farm animal milking equipment. So, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, you got something quality there with the $50 tongue drum. But again, super, a lot of fun. Uh, okay, Locrian. Uh, that's where we're just going to crazy town, right? Everything's flat except for the four. So what we end up sort of getting. Nope, I, I got to redo the five. All, right, all of your... Your, your metal music and that Bjork song. With your flat five. And finally, the very, very, very confusing Lydian. Uh, so here's a good visualization of Lydian. Again, Lydian is a one, two, three, sharp four, five, six, seven. The only way to get that on tongue drum, of course, is to lower everything else because there's no other way to get it sharp so let's see uh yeah so that's pretty much it i appreciate everyone for uh for hopping on and uh, thanks for all the, the new subscribers uh if we have any last questions i will certainly answer them if i have no last questions uh then that will be the end of the broadcast but most importantly this one didn't mess up because of the second camera larry i appreciate the question and uh yeah yeah uh next week i'll probably end up talking about some alternate, uh, different non-modal scales you can end up using, some alternate scales and things like that. Uh, and at some point, yeah, I'm going to have uh, the panel on and we're going to do some some fun, you know, Disney songs. And uh, I have to say, Larry, if you're still out there, uh, I did purchase the, uh, the music book for uh, Encanto. And I have to say, music is absolutely fantastic. I do think that it runs into a problem of it's not quite a musical. And it's not quite a movie with lots of music. So, like, it's got pacing issues. All the music in there is absolutely fantastic. So, all right. Thanks, everyone. And, uh, yeah, leave some comments. And if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. All right. Have a nice night, everyone.